The homeowners wanted to live in this area because historically the grandma lived on the exact same street and so naturally they just wanted to raise their kids here. This is a new build but the homeowners actually lived here. Previously it was a backsplit bungalow and they wanted to build their dream home. We wanted to keep the home feeling somewhat traditional but refine it and elevate it with some modern elements. So you get a lot of warmth throughout the home with these textural moments, organic moments that really bring the home together to make it feel cozy. As you come in through the foyer, you get led into this area of the home, which is one of my favorites because of all this natural light. The family room is beside the kitchen, so it really is dual purpose because this family loves to spend time together, so they can be doing many things in this space at once. The idea behind the kitchen all stemmed from these beautiful quartzite countertops. The Taj Mahal was almost the color story for the entire home. The muted tones, really natural, honed texture was really what drove the rest of the aesthetic. Originally we wanted to go with an apron sink and we loved the countertop so much that we wanted to use it as much as possible. So we decided to pour that over and do a faux apron sink instead so we could just really see it face on. I wanted to do a two-toned kitchen, ground the kitchen with darker cabinetry on the bottom so we went with a custom stain on white oak and we kept it light with the other cabinetry. I wanted the predominant hardware to be this beautiful honey bronze color. It's really warm and it accents well with the wood tones. But then we mixed metals also and added a little bit of polished nickel and some antique bronze for the pendants. We have a reading detail on either end of the island, which was really just a moment just to do something different. And we had done a custom mudroom door with some reading on the bottom, so I really wanted to repeat that so it made it purposeful, but also gave us this great visual. Between the living room and the kitchen, we have this eat-in area. Our homeowners love to have their meals together and spend time together, but don't always want to eat in a formal space. So it was really important to have that break between the two rooms where they still felt connected. The focal point is definitely the fireplace. We knew we wanted to keep it organic and textured, so we went with a surround that is like limestone. It's a mixture of plaster and limestone, and I really think it gives a warmth to the space. With the furniture, we wanted to create a zone that allows for ample communication. So everybody sitting around the fire, everybody can converse and just feel relaxed and calm when they're in the space. When it comes to the textiles in the room, especially the pillows on the sofas, we kept it somewhat quiet but wanted to bring a lot of life to the space and we did that through a somewhat organic, earthy, muted palette. We love to bring in a little bit of pattern, floral, and even some textural. The other focal point in the room is this beautiful piece of oversized artwork that we put above the sofa. It's by an artist by the name of Paula White Diamond and I loved it because it added a lot of contrast to the space and just really brought the space together. Obviously, the main chandelier really brought a lot of contrast to the space. It's really interesting. I wanted something a little more modern. Everything in the space is sort of calm, and I really love how you don't really even realize until you walk in the room that that is what's gonna be the wow factor. Because we have all this beautiful storage in the kitchen, we wanted to have a wall that appeared like storage, but it is actually our fridge and freezer combo. And then we have this amazing secret door that leads to our pantry and right through to the dining room, which was a great design feature. So the pantry space was really a space where the homeowners could conceal their everyday items when they're having dinner parties and they wanna put some dishes away and they don't wanna to have to come all the way in the kitchen or even when the kids are preparing their cereal in the morning, they have a space where that can all be hidden. The dining room was a little bit of a different feature in that we wanted to keep it a little more classic. My clients love to host dinner parties and we really wanted a space that felt as warm as the rest of the home, but a little more refined and classic. So we went with the wall paneling, the linear chandelier in the dining room was a bit of a feature. We wanted some visual interest, so the glass cylinders with that ribbing detail really bring a different element to the room. 
The idea behind the nook in the dining room changed a little bit. Originally, the plan was to have a deeper recessed area in the front foyer, but we decided to break that up and make two equal spaces so that we could have a bit of a nook in the dining room. And we decided to go with a custom buffet uh, with a little bit of contrast, this really beautiful olive green tone, so that my client could house some of her nicer dinnerware. Just off the main foyer, we have the study. We went a little moodier in this room. The rest of the home is really light and calming, but this room needed to be a little more masculine. We just really wanted that feeling of a smaller nook, but that had that richness. We have the main desk area, and then we decided to design a secondary workspace, which is kind of a bonus in this room because it provides that extra space if needed. As you move through the foyer, we have a beautiful powder room and we have these 12 foot ceilings. The rest of the home is 10 feet. So when you walk in this powder room, you get this height that is really grand. So my idea was to put this really fun, busy wallpaper and really make this a really fun space. We chose these beautiful gold tones in the faucets, which also accent the room and just pull it all together so beautifully. The primary suite on the second floor is a space where my clients can go and relax at the end of the day. Some of the design furnishings in this space were more about making the space feel slightly grand with the vaulted ceiling. So I really wanted to take this headboard and make it as tall as I possibly could. And the channeling in that bed really helps. We anchored this beautiful king size custom bed with an organic combination of jute and Cecil rug. It's got these beautiful lines and really anchors the whole space in its softness. There was a bit of a challenge when it came to the windows in the primary suite. Architecturally, they were slightly too close together to fit this king size bed. So we had these panels on either side, which really allowed the centering of the nightstands and the bed. And then we centered everything with this really grand large scale chandelier. The ensuite bathroom is one of my favorite spaces and it has many features going on because I was trying to please both clients. We wanted a soaker tub, we wanted a steam shower, and we wanted a really large vanity where they could both be doing their morning routines but not be in each other's way. The Calcutta tiles have a lot of movement in them but I wanted to bring in a little more so we decided to cut an area and add a herringbone detail to the floor which really just is a pathway to this gorgeous shaped standalone tub that's so inviting. Now that the home is complete and the homeowners have moved in, I really am so happy with how it turned out. It's really as warm and inviting as they are. <laughs>